If you want to support this channel, it's simple. Whenever you need to make a purchase, access our affiliate links in the description from the affiliated stores. This simple gesture will help us a lot. Uh, the first question that I want to ask is uh, actually related to me. Um, I'm, the, I'm in the last year of engineering. So uh, now there is a very big decision that I have to make now. And uh, people have told me that uh, if I take decisions from my heart, I'll be successful in life. So, but there lies a problem. The problem is that I'm, I don't know which, which thought is coming from my heart and which thought is coming from my brain. So how can I figure out like which thought is from my heart and uh, which is coming from my brain? <laughs> the heart uh, makes only two sounds, lub dub. Unless the local girls are disturbing it and it's going <laughs> crazy. Otherwise it makes only two sounds. Rest of the noise is all coming from your head. This idea that something comes from the heart, something comes from the brain is a… it's metaphoric but unfortunately a whole lot of people are taking it literally. There was a time in many parts of the world, particularly in Arabia, the medical science in Arabia believed the blood is pumped from the liver. You might have heard Urdu sayings about Kalija, you know, have you? <laughs> because they believed blood is being pumped from the liver, because liver is a far more complicated organ than the heart. Heart is a simple pump. So do not give it any more responsibilities other than continuously pumping the blood and keeping you alive, <laughs> unless somebody here breaks it. <laughs> so uh, about the last year of engineering, I want you to change that language because this happened. Can I tell you a joke? It's okay? Yeah. You're pretty it's serious okay. about this, that's why I'm asking. This happened, a very celebrated scientist was at a dinner and uh, he was not grandly dressed or anything, he was looking very ordinary. So the lady who was, you know, <laughs> sitting next to him didn't pay much attention to him, she doesn't know who he is. But after some time, just to be polite, to make some conversation, may I know what do you do? He said, I'm studying science. She said, oh, I finished that in my tenth class <laughs> So you're not going to… You know, you're not in the last year of engineering, maybe the course, but not the last year of engineering because for your entire life, if you learn engineering, when you are dying after hundred years, okay, <laughs> I'm not preponing it, I after, hun so. <laughs> after hundred years when you are dying, you would still know, if you are a constant learning process, you would still know you know very little about engineering. With that little, many things happen, that's different. So don't be in the last year of engineering. I know the program may be closing, but not the last year of engineering, okay? So, an engineering, essentially engineering means to have things the way we want. Yes? When we say this building is well engineered, I'm not saying that. If we say this building is well-engineered or an automobile is well-engineered, what it means is it's functioning the way we want, yes? Of all the pieces of engineering on this planet, of many pieces of engineering, a tree is a fantastic engineering, even a mountain 
is fantastic engineering because it stood there for a million years. That means it must be good engineering, isn't it? Yes? Something that stands there for a million years must be well engineered. Of all this, the most sophisticated piece of engineering is human mechanism. Isn't it so? Hello? Most sophisticated of all the pieces of engineering. Now, because it's a sophisticated piece of engineering, it needs a certain level of attention, otherwise you don't figure it. Now that we gave you such a highly, no, high-tech piece of engineering, I'm asking you, did you read the user's manual? I… I think there is no user manual for now <laughs> How can they make such a fantastic piece of engineering without a user's manual? Maybe it doesn't come with a booklet attached to your neck when you were born. <laughs> but uh, indications must be there, isn't it, how to use it? Huh? Is it true somebody who is an athlete or a gymnast or someone else like that learns to use their body than a whole lot of other people? Yes? Obviously, at least one aspect of the physical engineering of the body, they seem to have read the user's manual about the physical aspects. Is it true certain people are able to use their mind better than others? Maybe they read another part of the user's manual. So, now uh, with this heart manual and the brain manual, See, the problem is most people are prejudiced against the brain. So this is a question or always comes to me, Sadhguru, I want to meditate but thoughts are coming. The common question everywhere. I ask them, see, I'll make you meditate. We will stop the liver, we'll stop the kidney, we'll stop the heart, we'll stop everything, okay? Oh, no Sadhguru. So you want the liver to function when you're meditating. You want the kidneys to function. You want even the spleen to function. You want the heart to function. But you don't want your brain to function for some reason. This is simply because brain is a new equipment that you got in the evolutionary process. This level of cerebral development happened more recently compared to the other systems. If you cut open any mammal, they all have all these parts, isn't it? Every part that you have here, all of them have. Even if you open a frog, most of you, your biology department <laughs> Even if you open a frog, almost everything that you have, he also has, isn't it? It is only… the big difference is only the cerebral development, which is a more recent happening. Because it's a more recent happening, most people have not figured how to handle it. So, user's manual is very important. You don't read a user's manual just before you discard the machine. You read it in the first few days, isn't it? Hello? If you buy a phone, do you want to read the user's manual in the first three days or after three years when you're throwing it away? First three days, isn't it? So, knowing how this functions is very important. Never did ever heart generate any thought or intention. Well, when you looked at the young girl, heart beat more. That doesn't mean it's saying anything, it's just trying to compensate for the other levels of excitement that's happening. The heart is not trying to say anything, it is only compensating, you need more blood, so it's pumping <laughs> little harder. <laughs> That'll happen even if you run up the staircase, yes? What happens to you little panting when you fall in love also happens physiologically when you run up a staircase, yes or no? Fear also does that to a whole lot of people. So heart is not trying to say anything, it is just trying to make sure every part of the body gets 
the nourishment of blood flow. So it's your brain speaking in different tongues. What's your native language? What's your mother tongue? My Asmis. So, because when you know two, three languages, sometimes it gets confused, sometimes it speaks in English, sometimes in Assamese, sometimes in something else. So you're thinking different people are speaking, heart is speaking, mind is speaking, no. There is thought and there is emotion. People think these two things are saying different things. They're not saying different things. The way you think is the way you emote, isn't it so? Right now if I think, oh, she's the most wonderful person on the planet, I just have to think. Then my emotions become sweet towards me. Now I think she's the most horrible creature on the planet. Now my emotions become nasty, yes or no? I cannot think she's horrible and have sweet emotions. I cannot think she's wonderful and have nasty emotions, isn't it so? But today I thought she's the most wonderful person and my sweetness was flowing. Suddenly she did something tomorrow that I don't like. I think she's horrible. Thought is agile, it changes direction just like that. Emotion is little sappy, it takes time to turn around. So that period you struggle as if there are two dimensions of thing happening because thought is saying one thing, emotion is still going sweet because it takes time to become nasty. Everybody struggles but it catches up or no after some time. Hello? Today you thought she's wonderful, sweetness was flowing, tomorrow she did something you don't like, you thought she's horrible. Mind… the thought is clearly saying she's horrible, but emotions are struggling because they can't turn quickly, they take time to turn. But after a week or ten days or two months, depending on how deeply you're engaged, <laughs> after some time, emotion catches up with the thought. Emotion also says, yes, she's nasty, horrible, so we'll let's be nasty to her <laughs> So they're not speaking di different languages, one is agile, Another is little slow in his corners. So it looks like they're speaking different languages. When it comes to what you want to do, uh, you must think clearly, it's very important. Thinking clearly means the question is not about what will get me this, what will get me that. Are you pre is your life precious to you, all of you, I'm asking? Your life, is it precious to you? Yes. So before you invest this life into something, you must look whether today if I invest my life into this, after twenty-five years, will it still mean a lot to me? After fifty years, will it still mean a lot to me? At the end of my life, you turn back and I look, will I be proud of this or will I be ashamed of what I'm doing right now? Doesn't matter what other people say, but you should not do anything that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it so? Huh? It doesn't matter, people say so many things. Everybody has an opinion, it's their business. But you don't do something that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it? Then you're going turning against yourself. Somebody turns against you, you can leave them and go somewhere else. If you turn against yourself, you'll have to live with it forever. So this is all you have to look at it. Somebody… something will get you money, something will get you comfort, that's not the point. What you choose to do, will it give you a life. When I say give it… give you a life, are you just trying to make a living or are you trying to make a life out of this? It's important. Making a living is not an issue. A worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, all of them are making their life, making a living, isn't it so? They're even making a life out of it, but definitely they're making a living. So making a living with such a big brain is not an issue. Earning your food is not an issue, making a living is not an issue. Only problem is you want to live like somebody else, that's an endless problem. I want to live is not a problem. I want to live like you, this is a problem. So, it is important if you consider your life as a precious life, you must make sure you make a wonderful life out of this, hmm? Whatever opens up in that direction, that is the thing you should do. 
But when you are under the pressure of peers, somebody is saying, I'm going to America, somebody says, I'm going to the government job, somebody says, I'm doing this. So one thing that all of you should do before you make big decisions in your life is withdraw from these pressures of peers, professors, parents, everybody. Just spend three days to one week by yourself. Look at it, what is it that you really want to do? not under pressure from other people. What does this life want to do? Do that, it doesn't matter what other people think about. Today is Krishna Janmashtami. When we say Krishna, there are too many misconceptions about Krishna. When we say Krishna, most people only think of butter and girls and flute. Yes. But we must understand that his butter business was all till he was six years of age or eight years of age. So all this girl business only till he was sixteen years of age. At the age of sixteen, when his guru Sandipani made him realize what is the purpose of his life, first of all he left Vrindavan never again came back. Never again came back to see any of his relatives or the girls or boys of his area. That was the end of it. At sixteen, he left. When he was leaving, today if we say Krishna, we say Radhe Krishna. Radhe comes ahead of Krishna. Because their love, their intimacy, their romance caught the imagination of a whole culture in the entire subcontinent in such a way that we don't say Krishna Radhe, we say Radhe Krishna. But at the age of sixteen, he saw her for the last time and never again saw her. And at the age of sixteen when he was leaving, he said, I played this flute for you. Now I'm going and not coming back. So, as an offering to you, for the love that you are, I'm going to give this flute to you and never again play the flute again and he never again played the flute. From then on it was Radha who played the flute. He never played flute after sixteen. From sixteen to twenty-one, he lived as a brahmachari, he took sannyas, lived as a brahmachari, went through severe sadhana. After that, his entire life was committed to marry political life, political process and the spiritual process. Well, it ended up in a disaster, but he did everything possible. These things are never spoken of in the northern plains of India. He set up over one thousand ashrams because he wanted spiritual process not to be a separate thing. He wanted spiritual process to be a part of life. As we live, as we brush our teeth in the morning, we meditate. He wanted to bring spiritual process not as a, a fringe thing, but as a mainstream life, particularly to the rulers of the country, of those many countries that India was at that time. His mission was to spiritualize the political process of the day. So obviously, those days, political process was not a democratic process. So he thought, the most important thing is, if the leadership gets it, then the benefit will naturally come to the people. People who handle other people's lives, for example a king or a prime minister or a president of a country today or even a CEO of a company because they have hundreds of thousands of people under them. Once you have such a responsibility, then every thought that you generate, every emotion that you generate, every action that you perform 
impacts millions of people's lives. When you have such a responsibility, it's very important you are in a good state. What you think, what you feel must be coming from a certain inner space which will work for everybody's well-being. If I have a narrow view of life, every thought that I generate will damage people's lives, every emotion that I have will damage people's life, actions that I perform and especially actions that I do not perform, which I'm supposed to perform, will cause immense damage to people's lives, isn't it? So he focused only on leadership. He wanted the kings of the day to turn spirit. Unfortunately, it ended up in a disaster of Kurukshetra, a terrible war which wiped out, you know, an entire generation of men literally. But still we worship him. Everything that he wanted to create failed with Kurukshetra war. That's one thing he desperately tried to avoid is that war. But the most terrible war happened and even he, his own clan all fought among themselves and killed themselves. But we call him Lord because through all this he was playful, untouched by a terrible reality, a terrible drama that's playing around you but still untouched. But this we are saying, Lord, this you can also do, isn't it? Whether you are going to become the biggest success in the world or not is subject to many realities. But are you a successful human being? That means, are you able to conduct your life consciously or if life pokes you, will you become an animal? This is the question. This one question, if you successfully handle, you… you also we will call you Lord. Yes? My question uh, is about this gruesome, you know, horrible act that happened yesterday at Kashmir and we saw forty plus Jawans killed. So, I don't know how… what's the psyche of these people who can get into a car with three hundred kgs of ammunition and, you know, just blast. See, uh, as I said earlier, we're still not in that level of human consciousness where all boundaries and borders can be just wiped out and human beings just embrace each other and live, there's no such love affair going on, okay <laughs> Still, uh, national identities, religious identities, various other kinds of ideological identities set us against each other. It is… Uh, it is as simple as it is, but when it comes as to how it manifests on the ground, it's too complex. It's not something you can solve like that. So, in the making of a nation, in the making of a nation, one important thing is the sovereignty of the nation. Because nation exists only because of its borders. This may be an unpopular thing to say in United States right now, but you call something a nation, only the first and foremost is the geographical border, isn't it? Well, people can go this way, that way, people can change their language, people can change their religion, people can change their beliefs and ideologies, but it's the geography which is the first dimension of making of a nation. So this sovereignty should not have been dragged for so long after independence, it's a serious mistake. It should have been settled immediately, but unfortunately, they did not settle it for… I mean, I don't want to make a, a political post-mortem now, but it's a serious mistake not to settle the sovereignty of the nation, not to fix the boundaries and say, this is it. Still, it is a line of control. It's not the national borders it is still a line of control which is always out of control. And uh, there are various things, I don't want to give a political commentary now. So you're asking about the mindset. The mindset is like this. This has been in many ways put across. They are fighting for what they believe in. You are trying to fight for what you believe in. And this will go on endlessly, do you understand? 
Either you must change your belief system or they must change their belief system. And that doesn't look like in your future, all right? That doesn't look like that. But either you must have the wisdom to end the enmity. You must kill the enmity. You must have that wisdom. If there is no room for that wisdom, unfortunately, it will naturally translate into killing the enemy. It will naturally go there. Whether you like... Uh, am I propounding this? No. It will naturally get there, whether you like it or you don't like it. So just because somebody lives across the border, do you want to kill them? Definitely not. But at the same time, do you want to protect what you see as this nation? This is an unfortunate dilemma of being human. If you were an animal, anybody crosses your boundary, enters your territory, you just kill him, all right? Hello? But this is the dilemma of being human. Somebody crosses your boundary, you... you may have to kill him, but you don't really want to kill him. This is the struggle of being human. This struggle must be there in a human being always. If this struggle goes away, will you become an animal? This struggle must exist within us, but still acting decisively for the larger well-being of a nation has to happen. Why I'm talking about a nation is for me, nation is not a political entity, nation is not my nationalism, I, I don't belong to that. For me, nation is the largest amount of population you can address right now. If you want to bring well-being, you cannot address the globe. Hello? Yes. You cannot address the whole globe just like that. It is not within your means to address the globe. The best thing you can address right now, the largest human entity you can address right now is nation. If you go down, maybe there are states, maybe there are religions, maybe there are castes and creeds and all kinds, don't go there. Address the nation because it's the largest segment of humanity you can address right now. In that context, sovereignty of the nation becomes of prime importance. Well, what has to be done has to be done, but we must have pain in our heart. Even when we cause damage to somebody who is a threat to us, we must have some pain in our heart, otherwise we will lose our humanity. Be a multiplier of love and knowledge. Share this video with those you love, and together, let's spread light throughout the world.